Aggressor Adventures. For over 35 years, we've designed adventure vacations around the world, helping travelers experience the majesty of the oceans and the call of the wild on our dive trips, river cruises, and safaris. From the Galapagos Islands and the South Pacific to the land of the pharaohs on the Nile River, with personalized service in every vacation destination. Aggressor, adventures of a lifetime. From the Apostrophe Podcast Network. Hello, everybody. You're surviving life with Les Stroud. I'm working on jealousy. I'm not into hate. I'm working on anger. Because I'm not into rage. Quick disclaimer before you listen to this podcast or watch it, if you're watching the video version of it, is to say that I'm sorry, but there is potty mouth on this podcast. Nothing too bad. No massive, no, no MFs and no, no F-bombs, but there's still some potty mouth, just the same. So you've been warned. Well, welcome everybody to the 20th episode of the Surviving Life with Less Job podcast. And it is my final podcast for season one. And I, I actually already have another six or seven interviews, podcasts ready to go for season two. So I'm going to carry on. Uh, however, I thought it would change things up a bit. I'm still getting my grounding for how I want to do this podcast. Still figuring out what are the things that I love, that I like to do, who do I like to interview, what subject matters, uh, what's interesting for all of you. This time around... <laughs> I'm just going to try something new here. And I kind of jokingly want to just call it IMO, uh, in my opinion. Because in the end, that's all I really have. All, uh, all I have is my opinion, nothing more. It can be difficult to express your opinion in interviews if the other person that you're speaking with doesn't go down that road, doesn't go in that direction. And you, you just sound like an idiot if all of a sudden you start taking off on a tangent, which I am prone to do, but, but I digress, and not follow through with what you're discussing with that particular individual. So I thought, all right, that's fine. Then when and how can I just express my opinion? So I thought, what if I just gave you a bit of a monologue, chose a subject matter that I find interesting, something I want to talk about. And that's why I'm kind of to myself calling this IMO or in my opinion, because that's all it is. And what's my opinion worth? Nothing, but it is what it is. So buckle up, relax, Sit down, pour a glass of wine, pour a cold beer, a cup of coffee, a cup of herbal tea, whatever your pleasure is. This will be podcast number 20, final podcast of season one, in my opinion, and I'm Les Stroud. Like I do with all my podcasts, allow me to set the stage. For those of you who are listening and not watching this, because this will appear on my YouTube channel, Survivor Man Les Stroud. All the podcasts appear there. Some of them have video associated. Some of them will just have a thumbnail. In this case, it's video because I'm just sitting in the yard and I am surrounded by birds. And here's a tangent for you. I have probably 27 bird feeders and about 15 nesting boxes. Yep, I'm a bird geek. Can't help it. Sorry about that, but I am. And I love it. So right now I've got juncos, finches, hummingbirds, stellar jays, scrub jays, hairy woodpeckers, house sparrows, what else have I got going on here? All I have to do is look up. And every once in a while, I've got the uh, sharp-shinned hawk that comes down to feed on said songbirds. <laughs> so I get to see the whole cycle of life playing out here. So I'm sitting in the yard. You're going to hear helicopters, airplanes. Potentially, you're going to hear the odd chainsaw or even skill saw going off in the background. And I hope you won't have to listen to leaf blowers because, yeah, they happen. I'm not a hypocrite. I own a leaf blower. But I leaf blow... Once a year in the spring, once a year in the fall, and that's it. And for all of you who own leaf blowers, trust me, we hate you. We really do. You totally destroy the piece. Why must you use that leaf blower in places you never would have raked before endlessly all 
day long, just because it's easy and you get that power thrust of holding onto that engine and blowing everything everywhere. Yeah, it's really annoying. So like I said, I'm not a hypocrite. I own one, but use it sparingly, folks. Okay, there's my little, um, I should just end the podcast right there. My little diatribe on leaf blowers. Ugh. All right, where was I? Podcast number 20, in my opinion. And that's actually a great segue, now that I think of it, to what I want to talk about. Because in reality, what we're seeing on postings, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, are people's opinions on all of these various platforms. What you have are people who feel enabled, emboldened even, entitled even, to just say whatever they want, things they would never say if they were in a public setting. If Many of them would never say these things if they were even at a party and people were just gabbing and just talking. They wouldn't do it, but they feel enabled with anonymity and they feel very empowered by that. And it's really unfortunate because you start to see all kinds of rude and ignorant and unintelligent and unresearched comments on everything that everybody posts. So I thought what I can do here is, in my opinion, express to you my belief system around how I handle my own social media. Now, granted, I'm a public persona. I'm Survivor Man. I'm Les Stroud, the filmmaker, Les Stroud, the musician, Les Stroud, the author. I'm even Les Stroud, the hockey player. Either way, my platform is for the fact that I'm an artist and I express myself as an artist on these various platforms. What I want to do, first of all, is explain what I think these platforms actually are. And then I want to take those platforms and also dissect the kinds of people who are, well, as we call it, trolling, who are haters, who put just the rudest, most ignorant comments and the stupidest, asinine, dumbass comments that I can't believe they take the time to type them out. It's mind boggling. So let's first deal with the platforms. Platform number one, Twitter. Twitter to me is akin to, oh, you know those last three, it used to be the last three pages, now it can be many more pages of your local newspaper where all the uh, massage parlors and escort advertisements are and various other advertisements. To me, Twitter is like one of the little square blocks and black and white in the, in the back pages of, you know, like in, where I grew up in the Toronto Sun. I think there's probably 20 of those pages now. Twitter is somebody posting there, somebody saying something there. It's standing on the corner and expressing your opinion. It's just blabbing on at the mouth about nothing most of the time or the mood you're in. And we can, we can cite lots of examples of people who tweet when they shouldn't and they tweet at all hours of the night and day and they tweet when they're in a weird mood and they just do it without any filter. It's unfortunate because it's a cesspool. Yes, I have a Twitter account, and I honestly, I hate it. I pretty much use it. I'll transfer over my Instagram posts, go there and say, hey, Les just posted a new photo on Instagram. That's about all I use Twitter for nowadays. I used to tweet stuff, but to me, it's, it's low grade. It's pablum for the masses. For any of you who follow the work that I do, I despise pablum for the masses. There's my take on Twitter. It is what it is. I don't worry much about the comments that happen on Twitter because it is just a cesspool of mindless drivel. Instagram. So Instagram for me, and remember, as I said off the top, this is just my opinion. That's all it is. And uh, as my good friend uh, Tim Moore used to always say, yeah, opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one and they all stink. But I digress again. Instagram. Instagram to me is like, it's your photo album. And even as a public personality, if you will, I still view Instagram as more of a photo album. It's like, here, take a look at my, my nice pictures that I have. And then I think those people who use Instagram for beautiful video footage and beautiful photos, that is a great way to use Instagram. That is the way to use Instagram. And that's, I think, why you find fewer trolls and haters showing up on Instagram because it just doesn't feel like a place to be bitchy. If somebody puts up a beautiful picture of a bird or a sunrise or even their child and what are you going to just, if you're going to say something nasty about that, you, you've got serious issues. So Instagram is a safer place. I like it. Most people do not comment negatively on Instagram postings. As a public personality, I do use Instagram a little bit more to advertise certain things. Maybe when I put out my book, Wild Outside, I would do that. Or when I advertise this podcast, I would do it through Instagram. Might even copy it to Twitter. 
But I still think that the main focus for Instagram is to enjoy beauty, beautiful posts, beautiful photographs, beautiful videos, beautiful sentiments, even beautiful memes or funny memes. But the negative crap, fortunately, you don't see too much of it on Instagram. So to me, Instagram is a photo album. Let's kind of treat it that way. So you're going to see that the way I like to describe these various platforms is a trajectory. Let me start with Twitter, which is like, as I say, screaming from the street corner. We go to Instagram. Now, Instagram's very kind of private. It's a photo album. Come on over here and sit by me and have a look at my photo album here. Take a look at this. And so from Instagram, we move on to the two places, the two platforms where haters and trolling and just disgusting rhetoric seems to run rampant. Facebook and YouTube. YouTube first. I'll go with YouTube because there's a specific process for me as a content creator to use YouTube, to put material out for you, for free. The way I look at YouTube is twofold. It can be just for fun. We have all the different videos that you can watch. Uh, by the way, I'm not even going to talk about TikTok, not, not in this podcast. So you have uh, all the videos you can watch for fun on YouTube. And then there's the professional version, which is kind of what I do. I'm a content creator. So I utilize YouTube to not only to display content, but I'll even create specifically for YouTube and kind of put it out there that way. So YouTube is an interesting platform. To me, YouTube is like, in a personal sense, is like saying, hey, everybody, come on over. I'm going to show some home movies now. So you see where I'm going with this? Twitter's the back pages of a newspaper. Instagram, come and have a look at my photo album. YouTube, come on over and see my home movies. Now, lastly, we have Facebook. And once again, what I want to do is I want to relate these platforms to who we are as human beings and how we live out our lives. If Twitter is a tool that is essentially akin to an advertisement in the back of a newspaper, and if Instagram is our photo album that we want to just share with you, our photos, and maybe some videos as well. YouTube is like putting a sheet up in the backyard and saying, come on over, we're going to sit outside by the fire and, and watch my home movies. Or come on over to my living room, I've got a video I, I want you to see that I, I made. Or hey, grandma, come on over, I did a wonderful video of my kids playing at the, uh, at the beach the other day and I want grandma to see it. So that YouTube is a way of simply showing films. Now, as, as a content provider, professional filmmaker, of course, to me, it's a tool. For a lot of people, it's for fun. So we have Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and finally, we have Facebook. Now, if you're seeing a theme flow through how I describe these platforms, it will land perfectly, I believe, on Facebook. To me, Facebook is kind of like having a backyard barbecue. Everybody's invited over. Come on over. We're just going to talk about the things we like to talk about. And sometimes it's a backyard barbecue for everybody who likes to talk about hockey. Sometimes it's a backyard barbecue for everybody who likes to talk about plants or birds or politics even, anything. But either way, it's kind of meant to be a gathering of sorts where we all show up, we have opinions, and we can share them and discuss them. Lastly, I should add on to these list of platforms, uh, forums. And I'm not going to get into the efficacy of forums, except to say they're going to come up in a minute. Because what I want to do next is now talk to you about the people who do the trolling and the hating and the nasty comments on sometimes all of these platforms, but specifically and a lot on YouTube and on Facebook. I get lots of them. Hey, everybody. I'm just switching to the disembodied voice of me, but from inside my studio. I've put together this monologue to help people to understand how to think about and handle trolls and haters, and more specifically, to understand why I act with zero tolerance, as you will soon find out. But in the meantime, and as always, here is another track of mine from the album Wonderful Things, available on Spotify and all the rest. This is the song Dark Side.
I've got a drinking problem I've had it all my life A battle with the bottle Now, now so does my wife I beg for forgiveness Forgiveness never comes Someday I'll give the bottle to my son Everybody's got a dark side Everybody's got a dark side Send my baby flowers And a shower with love I take her out for dinner I shelter from above But I climb off my ivory tower And I walk down the street There's a woman on the corner I would like to meet Everybody's got a dark side Everybody's got a dark side All the streets a dark side, baby Every alley has an entranceway Most intentions are so pure when they stop But they don't finish off that way Marry for forever And have a couple kids all the problems in your closet yeah, You can keep well hid But a day comes a reckoning And you'll answer for your sins Even you've got a dark side, honey Everybody's got a dark side Here's a quick story for you. I got a phone call once from Discovery Channel and they asked, do you dive? And I said, of course I dive. And they said, great. And I knew what they were going to ask. They wanted to know if I would host Shark Week. I was stoked. So I hung up the phone, called a friend and said, quick, how do I get certified for diving? True story. And then when I first dove with Aggressor Adventures, I was hooked on liveaboards for life. A week of three or four dives a day aboard a beautiful yacht, looked after by engaging and wonderful guides and hosts, and then ending the days with five-star meals prepped by an incredible chef? Yeah. What's not to be thrilled about that? There's also their safaris in places like Sri Lanka, which I've done, and it was mind-blowing, or sailing down the Nile River. That one's on my bucket list. If you have not been on an aggressor adventure trip yet, go to their website or call them and find your adventure of a lifetime. You're surviving life with Les Stroud. Thank you. 
First off, I like to point out that there are levels of people who do the the nasty troll posting and hate hate posting. There is a level that that I never hear anybody really talking about, and it's and it's important one, and it's a little bit difficult because I want to be very sensitive about it as I express it, but I think it's very real. And I've noticed it. It was sort of one year, one time. All of a sudden, I was I was seeing a posting that was going on. And it was quite vitriolic and quite just sort of strong and and never ending and obsessive is the best word. And I realized that wait a minute here. Let me let me dissect this a little further. And then I kind of noticed a pattern. And I've noticed this a number of times. I think that there are also quite a number of people with intellectual disabilities and emotional disabilities who find the platforms of Facebook and YouTube and all of them as an outlet. There's no filter for them. And I'm not suggesting these are people that are nasty, who need psychological help. No, I'm talking about people with real and slight or severe intellectual disabilities, Asperger's syndrome and and autism and varying degrees of intellectual disabilities and emotional instability. And for them, I don't respond at all. I don't get nasty. I don't, I don't come back. I don't push back because they're already in a struggle and they may not recognize what is going on on this particular posting, maybe something that I did. And I first discovered it when I realized that, for example, one of the hallmarks of this is not understanding sarcasm. I'm a kind of a sarcastic guy. I like sarcasm. And so when I am sarcastic, People who know me now, and even if they just know my work, they know, oh, it's Strad, he's just being funny, he's being a goof, right? And that's cool, but some people come back really harsh on that. I don't think that was a very nice thing, and I know, and I can watch and look back on their posts and think, okay, this is somebody who's got some of their own struggles, and, and I just let it go. So remember that, that there are people with struggles out there that are now online, and there's no filter between their interaction online and the struggles that they are that they may be managing or handling. So you want to go softly. You want to be sensitive. You want to be caring in those situations. If they're saying something completely rude and ignorant, yes, I'm, I'm going to delete it. More on that in a minute. So then we have to determine some other levels here. And I've got three other levels going. The next level of troll or hater is just the idiot. Sorry, but you know, you're just a dumbass. You didn't even finish watching the clip before you said what you said. You didn't even read the description before you said what you said. You didn't even read the posting fully before you said what you said. You're an idiot. Shut up. And I have no patience when people do not have the patience, (laughs) if you will, to watch what you've put on there, read what you put on there, look at what you put on there. So I'm sorry, but basically these are the dumbasses and I've got no time for people who are just going to be a dumbass about social media. And along the line of this stupidity are the super immature, it's another level, super immature children. Uh, You know, I've seen posts where someone puts a post up and it just says, fairy farts. I say, really? Really? What are you? Nine? Fact is, it might be a nine-year-old, right? That's the thing. You don't know when someone posts if it's a nine-year-old or a 16-year-old or a 41-year-old who has intellectual disabilities and on and on I could go, you don't know. So when I see those stupid, childish, adolescent comments, gone, out of here. And again, more on that, that response, if you will, uh, in a minute. Now we get on to uh, just the real assholes. They are there. Like the dumbasses, they didn't really pay attention to what you said. Like the dumbasses, they didn't really follow through in watching the whole thing, or they did and they're dissecting it vitriolically. Just like, I can't believe it. And so now this is when I'd like to talk about how I handle these kinds of people and why I want to present to you what I believe these platforms are. So if YouTube is me saying, come on over and have a look at my home videos with me and you accept and you want to come over or Facebook is, hey, I'm having a neighborhood barbecue and come on over. The people who do the nasty troll comments, they're like the asshole next door neighbor who shows up and starts going, can't believe you're not serving hamburgers. I would have had hamburgers here. This sucks. That's who is jumping on your Facebook post. That's who's jumping on your YouTube video. It's the asshole from next door who wasn't invited anyway, who comes over and starts bitching about everything you've got going on. 
or comes over to your home movie night and starts saying, this movie's stupid, this is really boring, just leave. Better than that, in the words of the script from It's a Wonderful Life, out you go, through the window or out the door. And with me, that's the way it is. So to tell you of my technique for handling all of my social media, all of the posts, and all of the responses I see, it's not that I'm sitting at my backyard barbecue and wanting everybody to praise me. No, 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 don't get this wrong. It's not that you have to go to the home video display and praise the film. But if you don't have something good to say and you don't like corn on the cob, just don't say anything, just leave. But to sit there and be an asshole about it, well, you're an asshole. And if it's my backyard, you're going out on your ass. If it's my home video display, out the door, go. Nobody else wants you here. And that's the truth. For those trolls, those haters, none of us, we don't want them there. They're just the dick from down the street who shows up and has got nothing good to say and complains about everything. I'll add to this one last layer, which is the political person. The one who shows up on a Les Stroud Survivor Man YouTube posting or a Facebook posting and starts talking about politics. That's great. If I have been indicating to you that I'm a political type guy, that I wanna talk about Democrats and Republicans, that I wanna talk about the right and the left, that I wanna talk about Trump and Biden, I don't wanna talk about any of that crap. I could care less. So you come on to a place dedicated to survival and outdoor adventure. You're gonna come on here and start talking about some political agenda of yours? Gone. And that's where I wanna land this all home. So often people will say, oh, just ignore them. Don't worry about them. Yeah, but you know what? It, it, that would be like asking me to be quiet at my backyard barbecue when the neighbor comes over and he's starting to be an asshole and he's bothering all my friends that came here, not to praise me, not to heap all kinds of compliments on me, but just to hang out. And this guy's ruining it all. No, he's gone. If he was in my backyard, he'd be gone by the scruff of his neck. So my advice, especially if you're someone dealing with this, I'm sorry, is hide that user from channel, delete, remove. Now, remember, it's my barbecue. It's my home videos. I am the judge, jury, and executioner. Absolutely. That's just the way it goes. So, I, yeah, it's actually me going through comments on my social media. I don't have an office doing it. I did years ago when I was you know, crazy busy, but it's just me now. It's just me doing it. So, yeah, when I like what you've said, that's actually me liking it. When I put a little heart there, that's me actually putting a little heart there. And when I kick you off my channel, it's me doing it. I'm the one who's going there and saying, yeah, gone. You're an idiot, out the door. And I think everybody should do that. I think you see those nasty trolls and haters, delete, remove. And, oh, no, no, but then people are going to see that you're taking away these comments and they're going to show a, a screen grab of the fact that it was there once. Be I don't care. He's an asshole. Get out of my backyard. End of story. So I think that is a great way to handle the nastiness that is out there on social media is in my belief, zero tolerance. And because I'm the judge, jury, and executioner, I also make judgment calls, constructive criticism. Absolutely. If you want to say less, I don't understand why you wouldn't have built the shelter on the wind side of the rock because it, I don't understand about why you, that's questioning or you can say, you know, I would have done this. That's constructive criticism. That's fine. I leave those. But to come on my YouTube channel and say, you don't know crap about survival. Yeah, really? Really? And then <laughs> try to make some dumbass suggestion. Gone. Deleted. And as time goes on, it's a lot more simply hide user from channel immediately. Sometimes I'll remove a comment, leave the person still there because I'm not quite certain what they meant. So I'm careful. I don't want to misread what they said, but it still sounds nasty enough. I'm going to remove the comment, but I'll leave them on there. But I get to know their stupid little anonymous handle. And when they come back and it's like, no, they're just spewing negative crap, gone. I highly recommend this zero tolerance policy for dealing with the trolls and the haters and the nasty people who post on all of these different platforms. Primarily because if you're the one doing it, it's cathartic. <laughs> it feels good, man. I mean, just go, yep, yeah, you're gone. And those of you who had me delete you from my channel, I do it with a beer in my hand at the kitchen table and a smile on my face. Goodbye. So like that airplane up above me right now, I've come to the end of my podcast, season one, 
This is episode 20. This is Les Stroud, in my opinion. You can let me know in all the comments. <laughs> Try to be nice about it. Let me know if this worked or not. If you don't like me doing this, if you think it's too forward, then uh, no problem. I'll recognize that. But if you enjoy my opinion, because that's what this is all about, right? It's just me going, hey, you like my opinion? I'm going to give it. Here it goes. <laughs> all right. That's Surviving Life with Les Stroud. I hope you'll come back for season two. I have interviews already recorded that I'll be editing now and getting them set up. I've really enjoyed doing these for you. There's enough chatter out there in social media and on a million podcasts that all I am is just a bit more. What I hope is you can listen to the words I say, the opinions that I express, and in many ways, don't take me too seriously. I don't. See you soon. Hey, me back in the studio again. So I forgot to come back to where do you go if you do want to complain or criticize or ridicule people like me and others who are just trying to create great content to help make other people's lives just a little bit more fun, just a little bit more interesting. Where do you go? To the forums. Go ahead, jump on Reddit and trash me till the cows come home there because that's not my backyard. Knock yourself out. I hope it makes you sleep better. Now, Keith Oman is most definitely not an asshole. In fact, he's someone I even pay to be critical of me, critical of how I record these so he can engineer all of the bad crap out and make me sound good. And the Apostrophe Podcast Network, also a small group of people with the intellect to only ever offer well-meaning, constructive criticism. Make sure you Google them, for they have many other amazing podcasts, including one I was interviewed for called Alone Together. Stick around, everyone. We'll figure this all out. Together. Cue the music, Keith. Oh, hang on. One more thing. Okay, well, a couple of things please go check out my YouTube channel, Survivor Man Les Stroud, where I not only upload these podcasts, but also hundreds of other videos going up weekly. And try to catch my new series on public television, Les Stroud's Wild Harvest. Lastly, do a Google search for my brand new children's book, Wild Outside, Around the World with Survivor Man. It's for 7 to 12 year olds, packed with outdoor adventures and activities they can do and tips. I'm on all the usual social media outlets, Come and find me. Aggressor Adventures. For over 35 years, we've designed adventure vacations around the world, helping travelers experience the majesty of the oceans and the call of the wild on our dive trips, river cruises, and safaris. From the Galapagos Islands and the South Pacific to the land of the pharaohs on the Nile River with personalized service in every vacation destination. Aggressor, adventures of a lifetime. <laughs>